Welcome everyone to this edition of the Podium Player Interview Series, where we interview players competing in the upcoming All-Star Bowl. Today's guest is Lincoln defensive end, Emmett Gooden. Emmett, it's great to have you on. Hey, nice to be here. Yeah, the, the first thing I wanted to ask you now, with the bowl game coming up in January, just how are you preparing for that? And what does it mean to you to get that invitation? Well, first off, it's an honor to get in a bowl game. Um, worked hard this season to uh to get in it um uh, and feel like all my work pays off um uh, been training every day back home in Memphis uh with my D-line trainer Herbert Moore or whatever and uh just been doing some uh look look uh D-line drills just to prepare and um stay in shape stay tuned stay sharp yeah and um here we want to talk a little bit about you know everyone's football career, especially yours, just when did you start playing football and just maybe what inspired you to get on it? Was it maybe an athlete you saw with a family member, a teammate? Just what really inspired you to play football? Uh, I would say I started at the age of five or six in the back of grandma's backyard uh, playing with cousin. Um, he was a junior high. They played junior high and high school football. So uh, I got the uh, hang of it at that age. The physicality part, uh, I was always the, the shortest and chubbiest one with weight on me. So um, I could hang with them and compete with them. So that made me tough. And um, it was strange. I, it was one day, uh, me and my mom, she was going to the washer and um, I saw a, a sign up, a football sign up. Um, What's the name? And I told her to sign me up. First year I played, um, I played center, offensive, I played everywhere. Punter, uh, BN, B tackle, of course. And um, it was just fun. Our first year we got put out in the last round. We lost in the championship. So uh May All-Star that year. So ever since then, um, that first year, I, I just it got better and better, fun, fun competitive competitive so I just stuck with it yeah and was DN always the position you wanted to play because maybe most guys they want to be the QB they want to be catching touchdowns or what was it for you was D-line always the one you wanted to be a part of uh yes and I I slick blame uh Ndama can sue for that because <laughs> I, I used to watch him in Nebraska dominate and be powerful and uh almost won the Heisman and just seeing him like slam people to the ground and stuff like that, that made it fun. And it, it made me want to play defense, defensive line. Yeah. And, and your career, do you have maybe one, maybe football moment that really sticks out to you? Maybe something, you know, 10, 20 years down the line is something you still talk about. Oh yes. 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 Still to this day, I can remember my first year, the first season, um, I got my, First touchdown, second round of playoffs off a strip. It was 20 yards. <laughs> it was 20 yards. I'll never forget that. Oh, man. And, you know, how, how is it? You know, it, it's super rare when a D lineman scores a touchdown or, you know, a fumble and they go pretty far with it. Just what goes through your mind? Like, like, do you even know what happens or is it just, you know, full speed ahead? Man, I think I shocked everybody. And, <laughs> and it was like I always used to have a, a – a knack to get the ball in my hand and score. Cause like in little league, I don't know if they do it worldwide, but like if you have a stripe on your helmet, like you you consider ineligible. So like you don't get the ball. So it was like, okay, how can I get the ball? That's a, a defensive player. So I saw, I think, I can't remember who I, the first person I saw do it growing up, like as far as like highlights, but like, I just did it. It just happened all of a sudden. And like my mom, she really didn't know, like nobody noticed that I scored until when the ref like raised his hand or whatever. Nobody, everybody would call up guard. <laughs> um, I want to talk a little bit, you know, with the, with the bowl game, you know, there's going to be scouts there and everything, you know, GMs, coaches, just if, if any of them are watching now, um, what would you have to tell them? Why should they draft you? Why should they sign you? Uh, first of all, I'm a hard worker. Um, got love for the game. Um, love playing the game. A very, uh, very detailed student of the game. Um, don't mind working hard. 
Like, that's all I know, just working hard, grit and grind, down south mentality. Like, just whatever you need me to do, just, just I, I just want to be a part of any organization, anything. I just want a chance to play ball and, like, do what I love to do. Yeah. And just, you know, another part of that is just the speed of the game. Just, you know, in your career, have you ever noticed maybe the speed of college football maybe gaining up, uh, you know, at different levels? And are you prepared for the speed of it, how it is in the NFL or, or CFL? Uh, I think I got the speed, the, the, my first taste of the speed when I was at Independence. Uh, I went to, I did two years at Independence Community College. And I think we was playing Iowa Western my sophomore, my freshman year, matter of fact. We played them in a scrimmage game. The first two games was a scrimmage game. So we played Iowa Western. And, like, they had a quarterback by the name of Lockley or something. I think he ended up playing at UTIP. But um, he was a, a bounce back from Texas. He was very athletic and can run the ball. So, like, I think that was my first taste of, like, college speed. And, like, when I transitioned to University of Tennessee, it was very easy. The only fast team I can recall was probably Alabama. The way they, oh, like, yeah. move the ball and huddle up and, like, their offense as a whole. Yeah, and, you know, when you're on the team, um, just how is it, you know, maybe being a leader or maybe, you know, what a coach asks you to help out the younger guys, the freshmen, the sophomore, the team, just uh, what do you tell them and what does it mean to you that the coaches, you know, give you this much respect? Um, I think there's more of a, a natural role for me um, due to the fact that, like, I've been through a lot. So, like, uh, seeing a lot and experience a lot. So, like, being a, a leader and, like, doing what the coaches ask me to do, like, I think that's just a natural thing. Yeah, and in your career, was there ever anyone maybe that you looked up to for advice and maybe is there any, like, best advice you've received throughout your career? Uh, yes, when I was in high school, I was talking to uh, a guy named Frank Heron. He was a big time high school prospect, like five star in the area that I could like reach. And like, he went to Memphis Central and he committed to LSU and I was a freshman. And like, I used to just get tips and just everything from him. Like yeah. growing up, my heart's coming up through high school. Yeah, and how was that, your whole high school experience and then going to college, just what do you have to say to people that are just, you know, going through that transition? And was it difficult for you? Because that could be a little difficult going high school to college. Um, high school was difficult for me. Uh, my experience was kind of different. I uh, left high school early to enroll in a JC, so it was kind of different. Um, I got three and a half years, so it was kind of different for me. Um, uh, my advice would be uh, make sure you have everything in order from grades to everything. Have all that cleared and the rest will basically take care of itself. Um, train good. Um, create good habits. That's, that's the, um, like, the, like, probably the only advice I tell, like, my younger self, create good habits. Because if you start create good habits early, like, it will just go smooth throughout your life yeah and another thing i wanted to ask you you know when, when on the field how important is it to have the correct mindset because maybe some days you, you know you have a bad day something goes wrong um you know mispractice or something a bad practice just how do you go over that mindset and just continue to go forward and, and you know ball out and when the games come um you gotta have that live and forget moment like attitude like you make a mistake or you have a bad day or just anything, just forgive and forget. So, yeah. um, and try not to drill on it because that stuff like create dip, deeper issues and like, it'll just, just take you downhill fast. Yeah, you know, and coming up, you know, with all those scouts and everything, just for you personally, what is your dream? And maybe how do you think you'll be able to achieve that? Um, my, first, my dream is to go to the NFL, CFL, any, any, any league or whatever, and just to play, play, um, continue to learn, grow as a player, and like just compete. Like that's what I love to do. Just compete. That's all I love to do. <laughs> just compete, 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 and just work. Cause nothing in this world is given. So, 
I feel like if I have a talent or or so, like, you know, I, I just want to compete and just give and, and learn. Yeah. You mentioned the Dominic and Sue. Are there any other guys you look at, you know, maybe some of their game, maybe could be someone like Aaron Donald, a, a JJ Watt. Is there anyone that you really look at? Oh, uh, yes, most definitely Aaron Donald, but it's like really hard to like just steal his move because it's like <laughs> I'm not six foot, I'm not, I'm 280, but it's like I'm not that short. So I'm, I play tall. So it's like I try to look at Chris Jones. Uh, he's a, a good one that like pretty like similar body type, but he's a little bigger than me. But like Chris Jones, um, Match Crosby, he's another one, pass rusher that I watched, TJ White, uh, obviously Chandler Jones, and players like that that dominate the game. Jeffrey Simmons, he's another one. Yeah, and, you know, and all those guys, what they really have in common is, you know, they're, they're big-time sack guys, you know, love getting sacks in the quarterback. Just how is it for you when you get that, when you get that sack? Just how does it feel, you know, in your mind and everything when you finally get that? feel like everything paid off like just to get one sack it's really hard it, it's harder than what people uh you know what i'm saying portrayed it to be like getting a sack is real hard well not that hard but it's hard like in the game or whatever but like whenever you try to get a sack it, it, it feel like all your hard work paid off so you yeah. do so much pass rush and you try to think you have so many pass rush moves in your mind and like try to think so hard about getting a sack. And when you finally get it, it's like, oh, it's easy. Yeah. And, and you mentioned like one sack, you know, make it to the NFL. I think you would. You have a lot of great potential and everything. And, you know, if you can have one sack in the NFL on any quarterback, what quarterback would it be? Josh Allen. Okay. Josh Allen. I feel like he's a, a, a big, big, strong, firm quarterback. So if I ever can take him down, like that's a him or a Patrick Mahomes. <laughs> yeah. And another thing I wanted to ask, you know, about being a defensive end and you, you know, game prep and everything. Do you have to adjust it when you're against a quarterback that, that's maybe a little more more mobile? Like you mentioned, like Josh Allen, he's a mobile guy. And how do you do the game prep? Maybe you have a guy, a pocket passer compared to a guy who's who's really mobile. Oh, yeah, you got to change everything. Up. Like, if a guy is mobile, you got to try to, like, at least create some type of pressure and stunts to, like, keep him in the pocket and, like, hands up and, like, little different stuff like that. Like, batted balls, like, little small stuff that you think won't, like, affect the quarterback. It will. So you got to pretty much adjust and depend on who the quarterback is. Yeah, I got a couple more questions. You know, we got the podium bowl in Miami. Are, are you looking forward to that Miami weather? Just, you know, Man, have you ever I'm been down ready. there? Now I'm ready to get back down to the Sunshine sh uh, State. So I can't wait to get back to Miami. Nice weather, uh, nice people down there. And I can't wait to experience the podium bowl. Awesome. And the last question I wanted to ask you, I try to ask this to every guest. How do you define greatness? How do you define greatness? That's pretty tough. Um, Cause like, that's pretty tough. You really can't define it. You just got to live it and just, yeah, okay. I just experience it. That's good. And go that's good. through it. Yeah, so, yeah, it's a good one. I get it. Like, you have to live live it and be great, you know, like, every day. Right. It's really hard to be great every day. So, like, you really just got to try to do it or whatever. But you never – there's no right way or there's no wrong way because there's many great people in the world. So, you just got to live it. Yeah. Well, that is a good answer, I mean. And, you know, we want to wish you the best of luck and, you know, hope you make it safe down here to the podium ball, man. I, I know you're going to have a great career and I wish you the best of luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. No problem. Have a great day. All right.